Hi, this is Craft Diva Busy Lady, aka Lynette, and I am going to walk you through the process that I use in order to take a image that is larger than my printing capabilities, the max size that I can print, break that image up, put it back together again so we can put it on a t-shirt or whatever it is that we're creating. To do this, I am going to be using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. And I'm also going to show you how to do um, the printing of a larger image and breaking it up in Adobe Acrobat too. So to begin, um, I come in to the page setup panel and I set my um, canvas to represent the page size that I'm going to be using to print. And in this case, I'm going to be using the letter size eight and a half by 11. I have an Epson EcoTank 4760 that has the max printing size of eight and a half by 14. However, I typically print eight and a half by 11. So in this case, I am going to um, set my canvas to represent an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So again, in page set, page setup, I go to media size, letter, width, and height, eight and a half by 11. Um, the machine and the cutting mat, I set to none because we're not dealing with that right now. I also go over here and set my printer or ensure that my printer is set up appropriately. So I choose file, print, and then here I click print. Again, I'm using the Epson EcoTank 4760. I'm going to go in here to Preferences and um, select Advanced. And I want to ensure that my graphic print quality is set to the maximum, which is the 600 by 600. And I'm also going to ensure that my output quality is high. So now I'm going to click on OK and OK. And if I've made any changes, I want to go ahead and apply those changes. Since I'm not actually printing anything out, we'll go ahead and click cancel here and cancel here. Now I'm ready to bring my image in. So I'm going to choose file. Now, typically when you're opening up an image or opening up a new um, project to work on, you're going to select open. However, I'm going to select merge because I've already set up my page. I've already set up my printer and I don't wanna open another document. So I'm going to merge that image into this document. Um, I do use this with PNGs and JPEGs. I've not tried this process with an SVG. Um, it's my understanding that it's best to do this with a PNG or a JPEG image. So now that I've brought my image in, you see that it is five by five. I did mention that I needed to have an image larger than my uh, max print size for my printer. So I'm going to reset this image to 11 by um, 11 or actually 10.9. Now notice Notice here that the lock aspect ratio is open. That allows me to manipulate my width and my height. Um, if this lock aspect ratio was closed, had I picked 11 based upon the dimensions of the picture I was working with or the image I was working with, it would have automatically set the height to fit in with that. Um, however, I knew what size I wanted, so I left the lock aspect ratio off. Because I am going to be using this um, with sublimation, I am going to mirror this image. So object mirror, flip horizontally. Oops, sorry, I need to select the image. Mirror, flip horizontally. And to give me a little more working room, I am going to close my page setup panel. So now I have my image the size that I need. I also have behind it a representation of my page or printer page size. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit again to give me some working room. 
Now, my next step in this process is to determine where I want my image breaks to show up at. Um, when doing this image, it's best to, whenever possible, select some not natural breaking areas so that your seam lines don't show through when you put this image back together again. So I am going to select the image right here at the bottom of the color. And um, I'm also going to break the image, um, I think right in the lighter portion of his hair and um, yeah, the lighter portion of his hair and the shirt. That's also going to create a seam breakdown through the letter M. Now, because I'm breaking it across here at the bottom of the color, um, these two pieces are gonna be broken up. So that's two pages I'll be printing. And because the name across the bottom is 11 inches, I do have to account when printing for my margins. So I'm not going to be able to print this all together on one page. So I'll have to break up this portion too. So when it's all said and done, I'm gonna have four pieces. This piece here, the smaller piece, and then I'll be breaking the name up. Um, what my next step would be if I'm happy with where my breaks are going to be, is I'm going to, since as I just mentioned, most likely be doing this one, two, three, four times, I'll be breaking this up to um, get it printed. I am going to duplicate my page size four times. And to do that, I'm going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to create or duplicate this page so this is once click my select tool select the rectangle right click and duplicate it three more times right click duplicate right click duplicate so now i have basically represented the four pages i'm going to need Now with this first page, I already have it set to where I want it to break at. I'm now going to place the second one over the second piece. When I do so, what I do is I overlap the two rectangles about a half an inch. So this is my eight and a half by 11 mark on the ruler. I'm gonna place this second rectangle at eight to overlap the two pieces about a half an inch. I'm going to take my third rectangle and position it over the first triangle. And if you look over here to the right, I have my um, page size, my ruler here at 11. And I said I like to overlap a half an inch. So I'm gonna set this page size, excuse me, sorry, didn't even need that, come on. I'm gonna overlap this page size and set it at, or this rectangle and set it at 10 and a half. Take the last triangle, excuse me, why I keep calling these triangles? Take the last rectangle and I'm just going to position it in line with both of the triangles that are already there. So I put it in line with that rectangle and then this rectangle here I put it there so that gives me the overlap of a half an inch I'm now going to select my image and all four, four rectangles and group them together object group because I am going to have to go through this four times to break this image up, I'm gonna create four copies of this grouping. So I'm gonna duplicate it once, twice, three times. So now I have four of these groupings. So now I can move, excuse me, I can move these other groupings off to the side until I need them and we'll deal with this first grouping.
So with this first grouping, I want to carve out my first piece. So I'm going to ungroup this and I'm going to get rid of the other rectangles except the one I'm working with now. I'm going to select my image, ensure that it is brought to the front. So I'm going to object arrange, bring to the front. I'm then going to select my image and I think I moved it a little bit. So I'm just going to do a control. There we go. I'm going to select my image and I'm going to shift and select the rectangle. I'm going to come over to my modify panel and select divide. This should have divided this piece off and the bottom here. I don't need these now. I'm going to delete them. I'm going to position this on the page to be printed. I can then, I left a piece. I can get rid of this piece of the rectangle too. So now I just have my image that I need to print. I'm not going to print this right now only because of, uh, for time's sake. So I'm just going to move this off to the side. I'll print them all out at once when we go to um, put all the pieces back together. Now the next piece that I want to carve out is this piece over here. So I'm going to ungroup this. I'm going to delete the first rectangle because we've already dealt with that. I'm going to delete this second rectangle and delete the third. I'm then going to ensure that my image is brought to the front. So object range, bring to the front. I'm going to select my image. I'm going to shift and select my rectangle. My modify panel is still open. I'm going to select divide. And now I can take this piece of the rectangle away. I can delete and take this piece away. And now I have my next piece that's going to print. Now I will show you how to, um, it doesn't make any sense just to print this piece by itself. So if we can, when we break up the other two pieces down with his name. If they can fit on this, I can print them all on the same page. If not, I could actually bring some other images in here so that I'm not wasting paper. So just like when we started off, I selected merge. I could actually select merge, select another PNG, bring it in here and print it so I'm not wasting paper. So I could actually put this here, print it here, even though it's a little crooked. I could take some other things and put them down here. Like I have some earrings. I could actually take one of the earrings, put it down here and print that out with those two. So just so you know, even though you're breaking this image up, you really don't have to waste any paper. So again, I'm going to set this off to the side till we're ready for it to print. And the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to now break up the name. So I'm going to ungroup this image or this grouping rather. We've already did the first piece. So I'm gonna delete that rectangle. We've done the second piece. I'm going to delete this rectangle. And the last rectangle, we're not ready for, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to ensure that my image is brought to the front. So I'm going to object arrange, bring to front. I'm going to select my image, shift and select my rectangle. Select divide from the modify panel. I now can move this off and we no longer need that we can get rid of that and now i have this piece i can get rid of 
seems to be a few other pieces, stragglers here, but I'm going to select all of this here and I'm going to group it together in case there are some um, pieces down there that, uh, because these are all separate pieces, it might have divided more than I needed it to, to divide. So I'm going to, again, select it, object, oh, I already grouped it. So group that together so it can be printed out. Now I can come down and delete this piece. And I have one more piece to deal with. So I'm gonna select the last grouping I created. I'm going to move this off to the side because I don't need it right now. I'm going to ungroup this. We already did the first rectangle. We already did the second rectangle and the third. I'm going to ensure that my object is brought to the front. My image is brought to the front. So object arrange, bring to front. Select my image, shift and select the last rectangle. Select divide. And now I can delete this piece and I can delete this and my last piece is here. There are a couple of stragglers that I can delete too, but this is the last piece. So as I mentioned earlier, because I can break it up or I had to break it up, I can actually see if any of these or if these will print together and save some paper. So I can print these two on the same page. And then on the third page, I can print that. But again, I can do file, merge, bring some other images in here and print them so I'm not wasting sub paper. This might be too big, I'm not sure. Hmm, nope, I could probably squeeze it in. Not to waste any paper. And I can probably, just for the sake of demonstration, show you right quick that I can also bring in an earring or two. So as you can see, I can bring some other things in here with the merge or the copy from another page and fill up my page so that I'm not wasting sub paper. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead, print out all of the pieces and come back to you to show you how we put them together. Okay, I now have the pages printed out. And what I'm going to do is the edges that are going to butt up against each other, I'm going to trim them down. The fact that I gave that half inch overlap gives me quite a bit of wiggle room um, when I'm going to cut these down. I am just using a small rotary cutter that I use for paper. I'm going to turn this around because I'm cutting this edge off. Cut that piece off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces and put them together. So I am taking and matching them up. I got quite a bit of overlap here, so I have quite a bit of room to play with. Um, matching the seam up there matching the hair up there, matching the line, matching the lines down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tape across the white part here for a moment, tape this down here. And what I do is I flip this over 
and because I have so much overlap and you know as you start to do this you can actually determine that you might want to cut the overlap down some I am going to trim this down to about a quarter of an inch on the back here so I'm just taking this down to like a quarter of an inch And I'll show you what happens when um, you press this down. So taking that down to about a quarter of an inch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back over and I'm going to tape it on the back. So let's see. I have this together here. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to heat tape the seam down the back so it doesn't come apart. I probably use more tape than I need to, but um, I for some reason, I think if it's pulled together, the seams are, um, the ink kind of runs into each other to fill that space. And I can take the tape off the front here now, since I have the back tape. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to the side and I'm going to do those two bottom pieces, put them together. So these fit together like this. So I'm going to cut down each side on the inside here. Taking that down, and I'm going to turn this around and take this down too. Now what I'm going to do is match these two pieces up like this. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tape across the bottom here. I didn't leave myself a lot of room at the top to tape, but I'm going to tape across the top. If I can get my tape off. And I'm going to then do the same thing that I did on the other side. Trim this down to like a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to flip this back. Even though I wasn't very careful with that. But I'm going to flip this over and tape the back part of this. Enough. And then I'm going to take the tape off the front here. Now I'm going to match these two pieces up together. So what I'm going to do is where these pieces need to meet up, I'm just going to kind of cut this down. And because I know the edges of the paper are straight, that's what I'm matching up so that this line will be straight. And I'm going to take this piece here and do the same thing. The side, then I'm going to cut down. And again, that half inch helps me out. Because I don't have to be so precise. So 
Cut that down. Now I'm going to match these two pieces up together. And notice how this actually comes down into the white and I still have some red left over there. So again, I got quite a bit to play with here. So I just need to... And I like where I cut it because all I have to do is match the top up here. This is white, so I don't have to worry about matching anything up there. And for the most part, pretty much done. So again, just like before, I'm going to take a piece of heat tape, put it here. And I'll take a piece, put it over here. And I am going to trim this down to about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to turn it over and tape it on the back. I don't like the tape. I don't know if you can see it in the back because I taped it there. I don't like that tape to run together. So I'm going to pull this tape back a little bit so that I have nothing but paper there. And then tape that there. So and I'm not sure if you can see that. but It's basically just kind of taping all your seams at. But because I have four points here in this seam and I had taped used my heat tape to tape all the way down I don't want the heat tape between the colors there because um it wouldn't come out right so I just make sure that there's no heat tape under there in between there and I probably use more heat tape than necessary but I just want to make sure all my seams are down pretty well. And I screwed up that piece of tape. Let's do this. All right, so I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. It is so not necessary to do this because you're not going to do anything but throw it away. And it doesn't interfere with anything, but I'm just going to take this extra tape off of here. Well, you don't have to watch me try to get this tape off. I am going to take the tape off of here and take this over to the heat press and I will meet you at the heat press so that we can press this down. Okay, so we are at the heat press. I am using parchment paper down. Um, this is a polyester napkin. I buy the napkins in a pack of like a dozen and I use them for testing. So I don't have to use, um, sometimes if I have an old shirt that I messed up and uh, I'll reuse that. But in this case, when I don't have anything like that, I have these polyester napkins that I got off of Amazon for about $7.50. Um, for 12, I think they might be about $11 now for some reason, but, um, I'm you, this is what I'm using to do my test on. So what I'm going to do is place my image here. I have a heat press nation signature series with the pullout drawer. Uh, it's a clamshell. Um, my temperature settings are, is at 385. And I'm going to press this for 60 seconds, um, medium pressure. I will see you in 60 seconds. Okay, it's been about 60 seconds. Or it has been 60 seconds, not about. And we're going to see what happened. So as you can see, the image is here. Now there is a line here to where you had that extra, um, that extra additional, you know, 
quarter of an inch you kind of can see the indentation what i do in order to get rid of that is oops sorry i'll to mess up i usually just take my heat press put it back down for another minute or so just to get rid of that um line so um once you do that you really can't notice what the end result is i mean you can't really notice that that line was even there so here we have the image Oh, if you can't see it, Come on. put it in front of here. This is the image of putting it back together. You can also break your image up using Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is the free program. Um, I use Adobe Illustrator. I use Procreate. Those are a couple of other programs that you can take images into and then save them out as a PDF or save them in the PDF format. Once you get it saved into the PDF format, you can then open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader, which again is the free program. Um, notice I saved it mirrored. I saved it in the right si uh, size format that I needed it. Then when I come over here to print, I do a file and print. Once I select the appropriate printer, the Epson 4760 series for me, if I select poster, it will actually take the image and break it up into multiple pieces so that I can print it out. Notice here that it uses an overlap too. This is a really tiny overlap. So since I like the 0.5 overlap, I would come in here, change that. Oops, and it's printing. I really didn't mean to print that. However, it'll error out. However, what this does is this shows you that you can, using the poster feature here, print out your image if you can get it into the PDF format and you can print it out for free. Um, the only reason why this is not a way I choose often is depending upon the size of the image, like with this, I'm getting a lot of white space here. So these would all be sub pages that would be wasted. So therefore, um, even though this is an option, it's not my preferred option. Please subscribe to, like, and share our YouTube channel, The Craft Divas. Follow and like us on Instagram, at The Craft Divas. Follow and like us on Facebook, The Craft Divas Detroit. And feel free to join our Facebook group, Crafting with The Craft Divas, where we and members share what we are working on, demos, tips, tricks, techniques, and more.